Well, good evening, all. I Rapstein with your financial market wrap up, and this wrap up is for Thursday, and we're here now on the 29th of September, 2022. What time are we? Just after 6:55 p.m. Central Time. You know, tomorrow's an interesting day. End of a week, end of a month, and end of a quarter all at the same time. It's rare that you get that. It should impact the market because often what happens is money managers, they look at quarterly performance. Sometimes they get paid on that monthly performance, their track record. And obviously, uh, you know, you just get to the end of a week and some traders don't want to carry positions through the weekend. I get it for this weekend. You know, uh, President Putin of Russia is looking to go head to head with the world by this annexation of the four regions of Ukraine. Tomorrow he's due to sign a treaty. Now, I don't think that's the annexation, but it's pretty close because the treaty probably says he's going to defend them. So whether uh, they're annexed or not, if he says he's going to defend them in the treaty, and I don't know what the treaty says, that's one thing. I bring this up for a reason. Ukraine military is going to make an example. So they are around one of these regions, big cities, all these names I'm not going to get into. You can read about it. And to make a long story short, if they can engulf it and attack it, what does that do? They're calling his bluff. Or is it a bluff? Is Putin going to release a tactical nuclear weapon? Can he fight further? He can't fight militarily any further than he is, okay? These 300,000 conscripted people that he's calling up, they're as equipped to fight a war today as uh, I am. They're going to be retrained. They're going to be brought about. Some of these men are probably seasoned soldiers, but not most of them. And as you can see, the borders, you know, we in the West like to make the most of the situations when they go against somebody. And they're showing how people are running over the borders, getting out of Russia, whatever it is. Well, I'm sure there's plenty of men that uh, when he needed them, they, they didn't run and they're joining the army and doing whatever. But the, the simple fact is he wants the showdown. He's going to get it quickly. And in its own way, Ukraine is telling the West, you said you'd de defend us. You said you'd work with us. I'm not talking military defense in terms of giving them armaments and everything. We're going to do what we said we're going to do. We in the West think this whole thing is a sham. I am more aggressive than probably 90% of the people out there. I say call Putin's bet. Otherwise, every other tyrant that gets their hands in any manner on some piece of nuclear whatever is going to do just what he's doing. You've got to show them there's a line in the sand. You can't cross it. And I know you'll tell me it could be the end of the world. And I'm saying I get it. That's all I can say. I get it. I get it. I'm not saying I'm in the right. I'm saying that this is what I think is going to happen. I'm not saying a nuclear war, but I think somebody's got to call his bluff and they got to do it right away. Is it a bluff? Don't know. More important to me, let's get to the charts because I'm a chartist. As I look at this market, today you broke hard because of what? Jobless claims. Instead of them getting worse, and that's what the Fed wants. The Fed wants to see the numbers climbing, that people aren't getting jobs, they need, they're need, they back on their payrolls, they're off of them, the employment, unemployment's going to go up and all that. It's the exact opposite. Uh, they fell to, a, I think, a five-month low. All the market needed to do was see that away you went. In the British pound, the market is soaring. You do realize it hit 103 and a half 72 hours ago, something like that. It's back to the 112 area. So everything was bought time by what the Bank of England did. Now they're going to have to wait for November for Ms. Truss and her exchequer to come out and tell us what the game plan is, how they're going to pay for it, what they're doing. Will the market wait for November? No. The market will wait for a rally, and at some point it'll hit the market again. There'll be an event to call everybody's hand. It's the way it works. You don't have to believe me. It's the way it works. OPEC meets, I think it's the 5th, 
and they'll decide what they're doing. I'm predicting several hundred thousand barrels cut of production. They went 100,000 last time. They could be conservative and add another 100,000 to the cut. I, for one minute, do not think they're going to sit pat. I will admit I'd be surprised that they do that. They can do anything they want. Will they go the million barrels a day that Russia has called for? Of course not. Okay, Russia just wants to hurt everybody that isn't aligned with Russia. You know that, I know that. But they have more sanity in OPEC. And but they will, in my opinion, cut. Interest rate futures, okay, they're, they're marking time right now. That's the way to look at it. But when you look at the data, and the data is not showing that the Fed is policies aren't, are working, that's a problem. Now, they are working in a different area. They're not all failing. You know what mortgages went to today for the 30 year? 6.7%. And I heard that some brokers were asking 7%. Whoa. So that gives you an idea of things do work at times. When we go to the weekly area chart of closes, you've come down and you're into an important area here. Do yourself a favor. Run the 200 day moving average of closes and see where this market's at as you're coming into the end of a week and a month. Okay, very important. Just take a look and you, you come to your own conclusion. We're in a consolidation phase, a mini one, but you're in a consolidation phase where you're just whipping back and forth right now. If the market decides to rally, I don't know if it will or won't, 38.56 resistance, I don't think you'll get much beyond that. That general zone would probably be the, the peak. The market has stepped away from the right, from number one, it stepped away from staying under the Bollinger Band, and that's what I was looking for. I was looking for a play to, if you will, get a bounce in the market to get short. I got it. I put out in my Spider ETF video, the subscriber video in the morning, yesterday, the most trades in one day to go short across the spectrum of the market I've ever done. Today, Across the board, I had everybody cover on the big break this morning, half of those positions to get on the market's money. And now whatever happens, we're in a good defensive position. And they, if they followed, they did it. I also told people, I said, these are so many, you got to, I don't know if you should take all of them or what to do. And can I be honest? I cut back. I could have gone another third more. And I cover 40 some odd charts. It was a heck of a lot of setups there. What about embedded reading. Until this is lost, you know which camp I'm in. It tells me that the rallies, they're bear market rallies that should be sold and the pros will do so. They'll bail if the red line closes over 21, it's at 9.65. NASDAQ, similar program. Not as, uh, not as nice a chart as the S&P for a bounce, but it's the same thing. Until you lose the embedded reading, good rallies, I think the pros are gonna sell. What about the micro mini? Same thing, I don't see any difference. What about the Russell? Same thing. So I see nothing that has changed. Again, I am of the school because I created the course and I have a school that teaches it, that momentum in most cases will lead price. I'm of the school that doesn't like to go through major reports. I'm of the school that likes to follow the trend. Pretty simple. When we come to the VIX, it's calling it up right now, get you a current quote on it, there you are. Do, how long do you stay over Bollinger Bands? 5% of the time, up or downside, okay? I count each one of the days over it as taking away one of those percentage points when they're consecutive. So I was giving myself that this was the area it was gonna fail from, I got lucky. It did exactly what I teach and I was happy. Now. I don't want to be short bonds and notes right now. Why? Okay, let's go back to the idea of momentum. You lost the embedded reading Wednesday. You did not get it back today. That's good enough for me. I think this market now is trying to say, it, if there's a surprise, I expect it to be that the market gets a rally. The market is now oversold. When you lose an embedded reading, you go to an oversold condition and then you can go to neutral. You can also go oversold back and embed. Do you have to get up to the 18 day average of closes? You don't have to do a darn thing. 
often that's the target if the rally's going to have momentum. But it's a reason to not be short. That it is. And to me, that's everything. Same thing happened in the 10-year note. So if we can get that rally, fine. Am I looking to be a buyer? No, because my other rules say I don't want to be a buyer under the 18-day average of closes because the bias of the market is clearly down. In the dollar index, you lost the bullish embedded reading. So as you're coming down here, I'm getting a target now of the 110.67 level. So I look at that. Is there a reason for me to be short? No, none at all. But you, you went from embedded to overbought. And how do you correct an overbought market? Prices drift lower, typically. In the euro currency, market correcting an oversold condition might make a run to the 99.55 level, back to parity for all purposes. Okay, I don't see a reason to be short that market anymore. The British pound, what did I tell you here when you lost the embedded reading? Let me show you this, because so often, if you learn to work with this, away you go. And I realize that for many of you, my slow stochastic numbers don't match yours. If you're a paid subscriber of mine, write me. I, rep, I, I Epstein at LynnLLC.com. You have it anyways because you're a subscriber. You get messages from me. And I'll send you the formula changes you have to make. It's that simple. The rest of you know I'm not going to tell you what it is. Subscribe, support the channel here. That, that's, you know, it takes a lot of work to do these. This is not a little bitty operation I have. All right. So as I look at the market, you lose the embedded rating. I'm looking for a rally potentially back to the 18-day average of closes. I feel darn good. And there were reasons then not to be short. Bitcoin's nothing. Now, I've moved to the October. Tomorrow's the last trading day in the SEP. It's just going sideways. Don't know what to do with sideways action. In Brent versus DWTI, well, obviously the $7 area got a little expensive. Will the market break through that low? Don't know. But if it does, you've lost this uptrend that it's had. What do I think going into OPEC? I'd rather own Brent than I would WTI, all right? Because the U.S. wants to produce as much as we can within the constraints of the Biden administration's terrible energy policy. I couldn't wait to say that. And OPEC, who can just say, no, we're going to cut more production now. Who's going to cut it? It's not the countries that aren't meeting the quota. It's going to be those that can meet it, and we'll see what happens. Are they going to hurt themselves in the cut? No, they want to support prices. That's what they want to do. When you get to the Brent crude, you're at the resistance area. You came off the lower Bollinger Band, back to what I call that line in the sand, fighting the battle there. Same in WTI. This stuff, some of this just starts making sense to, if you follow me. And that's the advantage of my morning videos. I'm drilling this in you. I'm teaching as we're setting up actual trades. And I'm telling you right in those videos, buy here, sell there, go at the market, do this, do that, or I don't want you to do anything. And that's where we're at. So when talking this all through, one of the things I like to do is talk about this. You know, it's $7.95 for 24 videos for 30 days. What do you have to lose? If you think about it, you go to Starbucks, you get one of the large drinks, you give the kid a buck, you're at that price, you're getting 24 videos. You're not getting your Starbucks fix every day, you're getting my fix to you. You're going to get the videos that come out early in the morning, daily charts and weekly charts on the weekend you get the special, which is all weekly charts, looking for the bigger chart picture, a little different way to trade it. You're sitting in the positions longer than you are off the daily charts, just how it happens to work. My bonus videos, I hope you all liked the videos that we had. We let everybody see it. Now, we count those videos. So behind the scenes, we have records as to how often you come in if you're not a subscriber, and after a certain amount, you have to pay to watch them. They're free always with my subscriptions. So I hope you liked what you saw because it was pretty much a great report. In any case, irapstein.com, go to the research section or just follow my finger up here. Go to the top up there. You'll see an icon up here. Give it a click. It'll take you right into that. I'm Ira. You have a good evening. I'll see you tomorrow.